welcome to a Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. And we are sitting uh, Friday at the NEC in Birmingham for the Motorhome and Caravan Show 2022. What a great atmosphere, Matt. The show's just opened. It's really busy. A sold out day. Very exciting. We're sat on a beautiful stand. We're at the Camping and Caravanning Club stand. This is gorgeous. It's lovely, isn't it? It's fantastic, and we're going to be hearing from Simon, uh, the head honcho from the Caravanning Club. We're here with Simon McGrath, a very dear friend of mine. Not quite the head honcho of the club, though. He would admit that himself. Hello, Simon. How are you? Hello. It's great to see you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the to the club stand. And uh, yeah, I'm not quite the head honcho, but you know what? Hopefully, I've always got a smile on my face as well. So you definitely have. You're very much part of the fabric of the club, though. You've been there forever. Oh well, yeah, 14 years now, and um, and and it, it's just. You know, I don't see it as a job half the time. It is a vocation. I love it, and I love the industry. Yeah, we love you too. You are fantastic and a huge ambassador for the club. Now, tell us about this report. This has been a a long time coming and a long time in the brewing, hasn't it? Tell us more. Oh, absolutely, and and it's really exciting. It's called the Outjoyment Report, um, and actually, you can take this back uh, 11 years when we first published a report called the Real Richness Report. Now, that looked at how camping and the outdoors kind of impacted and benefited people's health and well-being. And obviously, we've been through a tough few years, and really, we wanted to build on the success of that first report a decade later. And so, we've signed up uh, our friends, our academic friends at Liverpool John Moores University and Sheffield Hallam University, and they are truly experts in their fields and and we've pulled together the outjoyment report which really does look at the health and well-being and the benefits that you get from being in the countryside and camping especially in all its forms that can be in a motorhome camper van trailer tent tent you name it but what it really does for you and our academic partners have, have just been so good at actually truly understanding what it's all about so is this basically applying the science to the phrase we love happy campers Absolutely. And I think, you know what, Matt, we, we all know that it's great for you, you know, but what this does, and this is the really exciting part, is it evidences, it truly evidences what benefits we get, how it can help us, how it can improve our health and well-being. And I think that's so important because we'll be using that to engage with policymakers and decision makers at government level to try and influence, you know, really positive social and health outcomes using this and and so it's hugely exciting it's not just about a really interesting piece that the media might find interesting but it will go so much much more deeper than that yeah and the health benefits have been proven in this report I mean the results are overwhelming aren't they I mean you must have been cheering and jumping up and down when you saw the results absolutely and I think the credentials of the report are are they speak for themselves. There, there were two main parts of the report that the, our academic friends focused on. One was uh, what, what you call a literature review. So going back to 2010, looking at chapters and reports in this sector, and they've, they've reviewed well over 1,100 different reports on it. So then added to that was the survey itself, which they built. And that was uh, basically nearly 11,000 people responded to that. And as a data set for our academic friends to work on, that's enormous. Uh, And that's campers and non-campers. So it's really important. And that's how we've been able to draw from that kind of, um, that just that really deep level of understanding of of, of the benefits really that, that we know about but we really want to shout about even more. Simon, if I can just uh, lob in here and ask a a really stupid question, because that's my job. Uh, What are you going to do with this information? What practical difference is it going to make? Well, we're hoping uh, early next year to to really kind of talk to uh, the the government and and MPs, uh, but also certain departments, hopefully the Department of of Health, um, the Department of Digital Culture, Media and Sport, they're responsible for tourism. There are also lots of tourist bodies, Keith, that we really want to kind of engage with and share the report findings with so that we can actually start to start a debate, get discussion going as to how you can use camping in all its different forms to actually get people outside, to get to improve the mental health of the nation, the physical health as well, especially young people. Young people are really suffering at the minute. It's getting more people and kids engaged through camping at schools and so on. There's, there's a whole load of depth to this report. Um, but it's really exciting and we really hope that, that the right people at the right levels will really engage with us on that. 
And this report actually breaks a few taboos, doesn't it? Everybody thinks, and if you look around this show, it's not true, we know that, uh, that motorhoming and caravanning is for retirees, for older people only. It's much more exciting than that. But this report really underlines that fact, doesn't it? And as you say, you can get younger people involved because now you can prove that it's good for your well-being. Absolutely, we can evidence it. And what the report finds as well is that actually people are much more likely uh, to continue really good, really good kind of uh, activities and so on. They, they, if you start a, a, a youngster on, say, uh, if they enjoy kayaking or cycling, you get them involved through, you know, in their early years, and, and a great way to do that is through camping and spending time outdoors. They will carry that forward with them. What the what the report also shows is that people are you know being connected to nature much more is a much healthier place to be and I think you're also much more likely to to to, to care for the environment in turn so there's lots of wins with it and um, yeah we we just kind of still really try and understand the depth of what we've published but it's, it's great I read the report with huge interest as a parent of four children three of them still teenage all in their rooms whenever they can be looking at a screen and it made me feel a responsibility as a parent to ensure that they engage with what we know is a great activity is getting outside getting close to nature and certainly it's made me I was thinking about it last night thinking I've got a responsibility to do that I know that but reading the report you can see the benefits and if you're listening to this and you are a parent I would encourage you to listen to the report, go and read the report and find out more about it. Where can people read the report, Simon? Well, if you uh, head online, you can go to the outjoymentreport.co.uk. Uh, there you'll find the full academic report, but also a, 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 a nice summary called an impact report. There'll be a bit more information around it too. And also a link to the previous report from 11 years ago, which is, which is an interesting as a, as a way of, of comparing it. But what I, would, what I would just add as well is, is, is just on a really light note, we really want to spread the word about the word outjoyment itself. I don't know whether you ever do a crossword, Matt, but it's called a portmanteau word. It's a blend. And we love the way outjoyment sums up, you know, the outdoor enjoyment that you can get from it. Because, you know, just, you just imagine, in terms of that word itself, if you're glamping, glamorous camping, uh, enjoying your brunch, breakfast and lunch, okay. talking about Brexit, we won't go there, you know, it's kind of like that's what it's all about. And so, you know what, in a couple of years' time, if we're chatting again, if we're talking about it, I would love to say, you know what, outjoyment, everyone's using it, and it's in the now going to go in the Oxford English Dictionary. That would be wonderful. Amazing. That would be one of the other outcomes among many that we're really positive and enthusiastic yeah. about. Outjoyment, outjoyment, outjoyment. I'm going to tattoo it to my arm. <laughs> What else have we got on your arm? <laughs> a picture of a sailor and, and the name Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't compete with that, but I like the sentiment. Simon, thank you so much for spending this time with us. I know you're really busy, uh, and I know the audience for the podcast really appreciate your time. Oh, no, thank you. It's lovely to chat as always. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. And we have got a very special guest uh, with us today. Uh, it's Dr Adele Doran. Uh, where are you from, Dr Adele? I'm from Sheffield Hallam University and I'm a principal lecturer in tourism management there. And you're here because uh, Sheffield Hallam University, Liverpool John Moores University, have got together with the Camping and Caravanning Club uh, to bring out what's called the Outjoyment Report. What is that? Yeah, sure. So it's actually a report that's 10 years on from the previous report, which where they looked at the um, what makes why a campus happy why you know what are the well-being benefits of camping and it was called the real richest in the po um, report so they wanted to do something 10 years on to actually see if campers are still happy if they're still getting a lot of benefits from camping and also to expand it and look at it in a little bit more detail so the aim of the report was to really understand what motivates campers what benefits do they gain out of camping and how does it improve their well-being but we also looked at non-campers as well and we wanted to find out well what might stop them what prevents them from going camping um, so that was kind of the main aim of the report so it's true there is such a thing as a happy camper <laughs> there is such a thing yes there is such a thing as a happy camper and happiness is actually quite um, quite a complex term so people just think oh happy but actually you know it's to do with someone's outlook on life if they have really good life satisfaction they have good relationships with others um, and they just generally feel quite positive um, about their life in general so yeah happiness was a key motivator for our camping respondents I think it was 97 or 98 percent of our campers said camping makes them happy so this report is it fair to say 
proves that being outdoors and being part of the motorhoming and caravanning community is good for your mental health. Yes, it does. Absolutely. Uh, unbelievably so. I mean, I'm an outdoor participant. I go camping. I have a camper van. I love, you know, going camping and doing things outdoors. So to me, it was a no-brainer. People are obviously going to be happy with being outside, but the findings definitely say, um, show that. So our findings show that campers have better well-being and are more likely to be flourishing, have optimal mental health, less stressed, um, and less anxious and more relaxed than non-campers. Um, they're also more connected to nature as well um, so we um, found we used a scale called the nature connection index which is what natural england use as well and we found that our campers are more connected to nature than the general uk population but also than the non-campers in our survey as well but what's really interesting is the more you camp the better your well-being is so actually you have greater well-being across all dimensions whether that's emotions social well-being psychological well-being um, the more you camped However, if you're in terms of being connected to nature, it wasn't actually the frequency of camping that improved that. So you're just as likely to be connected to nature if you go camping for one or two times a year as opposed to six plus times a year. Wow. And how long did this report take to put together, Adele? It was about a year in the process, so um, we really spent quite a lot of time thinking about the um, psychological well-being scales that we wanted to use. So we identified six really robust internationally recognised scales, um, but what that meant is that it did actually um, give us a lot of data, so the analysis did take some time, and we also had um, nearly 16,000 respondents as well. So once we was termed as cleaned the data, we were left with 11,000 responses, which is just absolutely um, yeah, it's significant. It's, it's, it's a huge sample. And there was an interesting statistic within the data, wasn't there, in terms of ethnic origin. Can yeah. you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, no, sure. Um, we actually, what, this is what we'd like to do next in looking at the data a little bit more detail. We're really pleased. We had, I think, I know I appreciate that 11,000 is still a lot of people, but um, we actually had 300, over 350 respondents who identified as non-white, so they're from an ethnic minority group. And what we'd really like to do now is look at their, um, da their data in a little bit more detail, because whether it's camping or any outdoor activity, um, minoritized ethnic groups are underrepresented and it's to be really important to understand what is preventing them from going outdoors or if they are going outdoors and camping in particular why you know mm. why do they love it so much um, so in terms of going forward I'd really love to speak to them um, you know um, do some more qualitative research so you can actually speak to people and really get to the nitty-gritty of of what makes them go camping what motivates them and what what might be a barrier so we are all happy campers. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Where does we go now with this report? What's the next step? Yeah, sure. So for myself and Kay, who are the researchers, we'd like to look at the data in a little bit more detail. We got so much data and we did we use six really, really internationally robust scales. So we need to drill down at that data a little bit more. And we'd like to also speak to people in person to understand their, the, the ins and outs of their experiences in more detail to sort of really illustrate our key findings. Um, but what we would, from a um, camping and caravan point of view and from an inter industry point of view, what we want to do is use the findings now to really inform discussion and encourage people to look at camping as an opportunity for social prescribing, green prescribing, so yeah. you know to address maybe some mental health issues through camping um, and prescribe it, but also to get it more on the agenda for um, education agenda. So we know that being outdoors um, and camping activities can really improve young people's mental mental health, it can make them more connected to their education, it can help them develop resilience and their character. Um, so if they if we can do if they can experience that at a young age and then they can go into adulthood with those experiences and continue camping as adults, then it'd be really important for you know for their well being, for our for our nation's well being really. Yeah. And that's evidence, isn't it? I mean, all of us have memories. We have memories of camping holidays of yeah. children. And they're always the memories we hold dear in adulthood, aren't they? We, know, we, ne we don't remember necessarily the holiday to Corfu. Mm -hmm. We talk about that wet holiday in Cornwall. Yeah. It's, a, it's odd. And we see this in our customers all the time. Mm -hmm. But tell me, is it that happy people go camping or does camping make people happy? I think that's a really good question. Um, I think that... 
So we know that happiness is quite nuanced in that it's not just about people being happy, it's how they perceive their life, it's how they feel with their social interactions, if, they're really, you know, if they get on really well with other people, that they feel a sense of belonging in their community and yes. in their jobs and in their careers. So I think it's a mixture. I think happy people will go camping, but I think camping and out the outdoors makes people happy. So I think it gives people the opportunity to rebalance, reflect, take time out, um, just work out what's what's good you know what's good about life you know just you know making a brew sitting outside you know watching you know the sun's just rising the cl the sky's clear you're hearing the wildlife and it makes you really connect with nature and, yeah. and, and appreciate what's good in life it's the simple things isn't yeah, it yeah it's the simple things yeah Adele, thank you ever You're so much. Very welcome. A really, really admirable report. Oh, thank you. It's very exciting to see the science behind it. Mm. Something that's quite emotive and we know to be true, but it's mm. often hard to actually make tangible. And yeah. I think that's what you've done. Oh, it's you. very successfully made it really tangible. I hope the report is adapted, adopted by the wider industry and the wider press yeah. and maybe even our NHS as well. Yeah, fabulous. Absolutely. Thank you. Dr. Adele Doran, thank you very much. Uh, that's the Outjoyment Report, if you want to look it up, brought to you uh, with the Camping and Caravanning Club, Liverpool John Moores University and Sheffield Hallam University. It's the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. And this is Dr. Adele. <laughs> so I'm here with Candy Evans. Hi, Candy. Hi. Candy's one of the writers and test editor for the Camping and Caravanning Club. Candy, I'd love to know what your view is on this report and what it means for the press and for the industry and what can we do to get behind it? Well, I've sort of been thinking about this really in the last 24 hours, having been so involved in the actual writing of it in the first place. Um, and as I was coming over, I was thinking, well, it's actually a much, much bigger story than our industry. Um, women's wellness magazines are the thing that's sort of come to, to mind for me. Um, how many, we've had a lot of talk about the menopause recently, yep. how many people are thinking, well, actually, a great way of relaxing is to get out into the outdoors. And that's the sort of thing I'm thinking, how can we change the angle of what we're saying so that we're not just preaching to the converted? No, we, that's right. And schools. I mean, schools yeah. are really a really strong thing for me. So many people I know, my husband is one of them, who went on an outward bound course when he was a kid. And that's what got him into the outdoors. I, mean, I bet he still talks about it as well. Oh, he does. Yeah. And that's the magic, isn't it? I mean, it is. you know, we were saying earlier that kids carry the memories of a camping holiday in that rotten caravan, you know, 30, 40 years ago. We carry that memory into our adulthood and it changes and morphs our future, doesn't it? It does. And, and very positively. You never hear anyone say, oh, we used to go camping as a family. I hated it. Oh, I do, actually. To do be you? honest, oh. I do. <laughs> but then it's about giving people that opportunity, okay. isn't it? Well, I mean, yeah. if, you've got, if you've got a class of 30 kids, there's going to be an awful lot of them that will go on that camping thing and say I never want to do it again right okay. but if you've got half a dozen of them yes. for whom it lights a spark then you have changed their lives yes and if they never have that opportunity then it's fine if people don't like it of course I don't have yeah. a problem with that really yeah. no of um, course. and of course the people that we meet with are all the people who've done that really yeah, yeah. so I we want to give that opportunity to the kids who so haven't how, got how that. can we get behind it what can we do to really raise the awareness of the report and and get it out of our industry into the wider uk and beyond uh, and how can we educate people that this report exists well, yeah that's a big question um i suppose on an individual basis uh personally i'm thinking of our local schools um because there is in Warwickshire there has been an Outward Bound Court uh, Centre right. which um, my husband was went to all those a horribly large number of years ago and they're talking about closing it. Oh, right. Now we can actually use these figures as part of the the argument to say well let's keep it open because it could change those, these, some could of these youngsters lives. lives. Yeah. yeah. You were saying it's a much bigger story actually yeah. than just motorhoming and caravanning and the pastime and you're right because uh, uh, the menopause mental health generally for men and for women is an issue now which people are paying more attention to and even though people who take part in this pastime have known the benefits this research underlines it and proves to the skeptics everybody else that they really should be taking part shouldn't they yeah, and what I particularly like about this is that it has been done completely independently. Yes, the Camping and Caravanning Club has obviously supported it and funded it, but that we've been we've been very they've been very careful the academics to make sure that the club doesn't have 
any say in what the results are, which I think is really, really important. Yeah, so we have to underline this is not a report produced commercially, so you can use it commercially. This is true science. Yes, absolutely. And when you look back at the Real Richness report that was done in 2011, there was some great stuff in that. But psychology and things have moved on such a long way and we understand so much more about how to measure these things. Um, and so the measurements are against nationally recognised measures. So we can use this in places where nobody's interested in the marketing of camping and caravanning at all, which I think is good. Let me just ask briefly about measurement. Say in five years' time, what do you think the effect of this survey, this science, will be? Well, I really hope it will mean that there will be more schools um, doing outdoor activities. I hope that it will be, well, generally many more people will be seeing camping as being part of the big outdoors that they want to be part of and not and part, a way of getting into the outdoors as well as just doing it. It's not doing it for its own sake, but because you can get out there and make the most of it. Now, tell me, I do want to ask, the day the results arrived, which are overwhelmingly positive, what was the reaction in the offices? Oh, well, it was relief, shall <laughs> put it that way. Yeah, I bet. yeah, yes. And in fact, if anything, they were much better than expected. Yeah. Because the one figure which is sticking in my mind is that 93% of the respondents said that they should get their camping on the curriculum. Right. It was only 59% uh, in 2011. Now, yeah. that's a massive change. And I think people are behind it, so let's get everybody out there. And your message is, is to get, get the kids on board, get it into schools, because uh, we mentioned to, to Simon before the perception from non-motorhomers and non-caravanners and, and campers is it's a pastime for the retired or for, for the older. But, but you're, you're right, aren't you? Let's, let's get them young so you've got a whole new generation. Yes, and, and a whole diversity of people as well who would, whose families just haven't in the past ever been. I mean, let's let's yeah. get out there. I mean, Matt's got you, you know, some evidence of that, haven't you, uh, for, for through your business, uh, diversity. Plenty of evidence, yeah. But the, the last year, we've seen a much wider ethnic trend of customer coming through hiring a motorhome. And that was a trend in the report as well, wasn't it? And a younger demographic as well. Um, you know, our average age of, of, of our customers has dropped tremendously. So, yeah, I'd say let's go for a nation of happy, healthy people that love the outdoors. Yeah. I mean, in fact, one of the Campion Caravanning Club's founding things is to make camping available for everybody and also particularly the words they use are for those of limited means so I mean if we're perfectly honest then probably the, the motorhome side is going to be less for those of yes. limited means um, but there will be that that's part of it as well to say let's bring people in in the tents and then who knows where they can go in the future. Like you say, bring them in in tents, because there's nothing like, even if you're travelling 50 miles away from where, where you live, there's nothing like the countryside in the United Kingdom and Ireland. It is there, just drink in that wonderfulness. My kid's yeah. favourite campsite is a few miles from home. Yeah. Yeah. That's yes, you don't have to spend a fortune on it. No, it's not at all. And you don't yeah. have to go very far. It's just outdoors, and it's a simple pleasure. Say, so, you know, bikes, kites, on the beach in the campsite, in nature, no phones, no screens, and you know what, they don't even notice. Yeah. Well, they would eventually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get a balance right here. Yeah. Yeah. I can't cope without my phone on a campsite, let's no, be honest true. about this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> Candy, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you, it's a privilege. Thanks, thank Candy, great to see you. Thank you, and you.